DM Yourself from Tom Scott is a wonderful supplement written for people that want to play solo pre-written adventures, uh, specifically in Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. When I was reading this, I actually discovered a few tools that are in this book that I will be incorporating into my solo adventures, and I wanted to share those with you today. So let's get into this. Welcome to Solitary RPG. Before we dive into the book, I first want to talk about the book itself. This is a book that I made from the PDF, so the binding is not perfect. This was my first attempt at what's known as a perfect binding for a book. Um, binding books is another hobby of mine that I've recently gotten into um, for a variety of different reasons. Um, but this was just my first attempt. So things aren't perfect, as you can tell here. When I glued the cover on, I didn't um, have it lined up perfectly. And when I put my tape on, I didn't put it on straight. So there's some, some challenges there. But those are the, the quirks about binding books that make them a little bit more personal to me. And it's also a learning experience. Uh, I'm learning how to bind books, and this is just one more of my examples. So I take, I've been taking a lot of my PDFs, printing them out, and binding them. But I am getting better at certain things, especially with putting in my end pages. And this is a perfect bound book, which helps. It's supposed to help with laying flat. And as you can see, here are my threads that I used for my perfect binding, which... It's a whole nother thing in itself, but uh, so please don't judge the quality of the work based on the book. This is something that I made. So with that out of the way, let's jump into this. So DM yourself, as I said earlier, is a supplement written for people that want to play pre-written adventures um, from Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. However, the information in here can be used for any pre-written adventures. There are some great tips and um, tools that you can use for a lot of different game systems. The primary focus throughout this book is about two specific adventures from Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. The Lost Minds of, I'm going to call it Fandelver, and the Dragon of Icebire Peak. And the reason the author focused on those uh, primarily is it makes it really easy uh, for people to pick up the information, focus on just two specific adventures, and move forward. Um, but it also has a lot to do with how the adventures are written. A lot of the tips and tools provided in this supplement are because of the way the adventures are written for Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. Um, but again... Information can be extrapolated from this and used in any pre-written adventure. And there's also some tools, tips, and techniques that can be used in just regular solo gaming adventures. And that's what I want to focus on in this video, are the things that I pulled out of this that I can use in just any solo adventure. The first one is default behaviors. And I really liked this concept that the author brought forward and it's very helpful with solo adventuring and all they are is it's a statement that you're going to write about your character prior to your adventure that your character will always do i will always listen at a closed door so something that happens in solo adventuring is you get really caught up in everything that you're doing because you're the gm and the player and you're responsible for everything that's taking place and sometimes you may forget to do certain things and you may feel like you're cheating because you didn't listen at a closed door prior to going into a room and then you're rolling on your oracles or whatever you're using and there's a uh, something that was behind the door and everything just went sideways for you and it became a a turning point or maybe your character died but having some pre-written behaviors written out before your adventure 
about your character's personality or some traits that they may have, like a thief uh, may always be checking for certain things, like looting bodies and things like that. And they just always do these things just like normal people do. We always do certain behaviors. Uh, you're just including those into your character. And I really found that as a, as a good tool that you can use in your solo adventures. You don't have to write a bunch of these things out, just a few, uh, to give your character some, some personality about, hey, these are their quirks, these are things that they do, these are their su superstitions, their beliefs, whatever. Um, but listening at doors always. You always listen at a door before you enter the door. And if something, if you forget to do it while you're playing your adventure, because you had it written down, you don't feel like you're you're cheating or you're not playing by the spirit of the game that you're you're running. These are just predetermined behaviors. Uh, other um, behaviors you can talk about is um, actual specific behaviors about your character. Um, who goes first in marching order? Uh, what weapons is their default weapons that they always grab? If we're playing an adventure and you're going through a dungeon or you've had combats and you grab, you got a bunch of different weapons. You have a sword and an axe and a shield. You can you can have a default behavior on the your, your chosen weapon or how you approach a social encounter. Do you always approach your social encounters with? Uh, Aggression? Like, uh, are you always like the big burly person that tries to intimidate? Or are you a little bit more political in, in approaching your, your social encounters and a little bit more um, uh, uh, friendly and approachable? So again, these are just like default behaviors. And I really think this is a great um, couple little lines that you can write on your character sheet just to help you with your adventure. Uh, just because, like I said, things get chaotic uh, when you're sometimes in this heat of the moment of your of your solo adventure, and you you forget to do something, and you feel like, oh, I'm I got to go back and redo that because I forgot to do that. Well, if you have some of the stuff written out, hey, there you go. It, it, you don't have to go back and do everything because you always listened at the door. You always checked for traps. This are, these are just default behaviors. Give your characters a few of them. You can even do it with alignments. Um, if you're playing a, a certain class, or if your, your person comes from nobility, or whatever, you can actually put in more kind of alignment type of personality traits. Um, I'll never torture an enemy because that's your alignment. You don't believe in torture. Um, <laughs> I really like this one. This one was just funny. I hate dwarves and find it impossible to be civil to them. Again, that's a <laughs> kind of a trait of a personality that you can put into your, your character creation. While you're creating your character, you're creating some of these just personality traits, things that you do. Uh, quirks and, and things in, like that that you can add into your character generation that just will work into your game system uh, so that way when you've got a lot going on on the table you don't forget these things or if you happen to forget these things um, you can weave that into your story right away and not have to go back and reset. Uh, it was it's just neat stuff and I really found that fascinating and in the back of the book, in the appendix, they've kind of created their own character sheet for, again, Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. But they incorporated everything that's in this book uh, into this. And they actually put in these, they call them time-consuming behaviors, other behaviors that you can pre-fill out while you're filling out your character sheet. And how easy is it just to lift this right out of here and add this to whatever game system you're playing, whatever character sheet you have. It could just be a little 3 by 5 card that you lay on top of your character sheet so it stands out more. Because sometimes in character sheets, things get lost. You can just add these out separately. So, really found this as a useful tool that I will be moving forward with in my gameplay. And then moving on, 
This is called the immersion table. I really, really like this. So, as a solo gamer, sometimes we can try to get, we can get lost in trying to articulate all the details of a room. We're rolling on charts. We're we're looking up all these things, and we're trying to describe a room. This immersion table just kind of streamlines it straight. Just gets it really quick and down and dirty where you just roll a d6, you find one of the senses, either smell, sound, sight, skin, social, or senses, uh, like your sixth sense, or the atmosphere, or the mood, the emotion, and you just focus on that. You, you just, like if you walk into a, a dungeon, a tavern, or you're in the woods and you roll and you get smell, you just focus on the smell of the environment that you're in to describe it. And you don't get into the visual. You don't get into the sounds and all the other things. You just go with your smell. Makes it simpler, makes it quicker, makes it easier. And I like it. Like it, it just, I don't have to get too lost into rolling up on a bunch of different charts to describe a room or a tavern. I walk into a tavern. Oh, it just smells of ale and body odor and food and wood. And then that's all I'm going to focus on is the smell. And it gives, here it goes into more breaking down of all the different uh, senses uh, that you can focus on. Quick, easy chart. Roll. I'm just going to focus on this one subject matter in this environment and then move on to the next part. And they even go a little bit further in the appendix. Back in the back of the book. Again, this is just a great resource. It's not just for Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition pre-written adventures. You can use this for a lot of different things. Um, but you got some tables here that you can just start rolling on if you need that extra little bit. If you want a chart to roll on. You know, we do, some people do like to roll on charts. I do like rolling on charts. Um, but I don't want to get lost in them. So here I can just make a few rolls and get some wor words that might help me with uh, describing the senses that I'm, I'm focusing on. So neat stuff. I like it. Again, another tool that I will be, you know, incorporating depending on the adventure. Not all adventures are going to require um that much detail but some will and i want to be able to focus on that then the book gets into you know just more tools and tips talking about you know do you use miniatures do you not how to you know do like if you have a dungeon that you're how to block it out and things like that great information but then the last thing i want to talk about is logging time and rest this is one of those things that I struggle with every once in a while is how much time am I spending doing things so that my characters need to take a rest to recuperate. Sometimes I just kind of go, 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 and then I, I just get to a stopping point and go, okay, we're going to rest now. And that's pretty much how I run my adventures. Well, this one, this is actually is a really good tip where you're using a clock, a counter clock, and you're just putting little check marks every time you do things. So if we're in a dungeon and I'm checking a door, I'm listening at a door and checking a door to see if it's locked, we give ourselves a little, little hash mark. And basically what we're saying is that's taking up five minutes of time. Which seems reasonable. If I was to be walking up to a door, I'm going to be walking quietly. So I'm going to be moving slower. And then I'm going to be putting my ear up against the door to listen. And if I'm not hearing anything, then I'm going to slowly move the handle or push on it, depending on the type of door, uh, to open it. So all those things are going to be done slowly, methodically. I'm not a barbarian. I'm not a brute orc. And I'm not just going to go stomping up to a door and I could do that. Still going to take a little bit of time, not as much. Uh, so again, you're taking what you're doing and you're, you're giving yourselves a little, 
little hash marks. And once you reach 12 hash marks, so these little hash marks basically represent five minutes of time. Uh, you're gonna, once you get to 12, you're gonna roll. And you're, this is just gonna be, do I have a wandering monster? Or is there something going on? And that's all you're doing. You're tracking time. And once you get 12 hash marks, you're basically saying that's an hour. And now does something happen? Do we have a wandering monster, which is the big one when you're in a dungeon or out in the forest? Not so much in the city, but if you were in a city and you were kind of going from vendor booth to different places, again, your hash marks can be increased. Uh, if I'm at a vendor booth and I'm haggling, I may give myself two hash marks because it's taking longer because this person, this merchant is just being stubborn and won't pay the price, that, won't take the price I want to pay. But you could give yourselves more hash marks depending on what's going on. Again, the wandering monster could just be a social interaction, a negative social interaction in a city if you wanted to go that route. Uh, 1618, this is a disadvantage on the next surprise check or initiative roll not a bad little thing and then one through 15 nothing happens we're just going about our day but the the gist of what I'm, I'm sharing with this is it's just a good way to track time that's not too cumbersome uh that yes there's lots of time trackers out there and, and they can get a little detail this is just little hash mark and once you get 12 of them then you're just rolling to see if something happens because you've been in this space or you've been moving for an hour making noise um, just doing stuff adventuring and does something happen does a monster hmm, find you or the town guard find you in haul you off that's what's going on i just found it to be a, a fascinating little tool that's not overly complicated and something that with my upcoming adventure with into the weird and wild i felt this would be something that i could use because i will be adventuring in the woods and i want to be able to track time because i want to be able to track morning to night and how much time am i using wandering through the woods and i'm going to give this a good go uh, with that adventure and then we get into just more information about puzzles and things of that nature uh, how to use them solo because a puzzle can be a problem to do solo because you kind of have the or the riddle you kind of have it already figured out so just some good tips but then we get into the appendix which they have their own little oracle back here millions of different oracles this is just a simple d6 one but it kind of breaks it down you roll the d6 you got a yes no result you got some examples, and then you also have a task for your difficult rating, your, your DC rating from, you know, if you rolled a, th a 1, it's 30, nearly impossible. You got a 6, it's 5, it's trivial. So it gives you a little bit more of a spread of information that you can use from reference material. Um, but again, here's the deep dive into the immersion table, which... Um, again, all of this, these tools I will be pulling out of this book and putting into my solo GM journal. Um, these, my journal is just a separate book where I keep really cool information that I like to go to on a regular basis. And th this is stuff I will pull out and be putting into that journal. Uh, again, good stuff. And then we get into some combat stuff. This is really about behaviors. If it's something you're interested in, you'll take a dive into it. I have other tools I use for how my encounters work. Um, so I'm not going to really uh, focus too much on that. But it does get into a pretty good dive into that. And that's pretty much it. Um, just good stuff. Here's some really specific information about the adventures uh, that were focused on throughout this book. Which, uh, oh, Storm King Thunder was another one and curse of strahd um, anyways but just some really good deep dive tip information that you may want to read if you are interested in doing pre-written solo dungeons and dragons fifth edition adventures <laughs> good stuff and again then we get into the character sheet so that is dm yourself from tom scott 
He does have a, another book out that has more of a focus on OSR uh, information. It has a red cover. I don't have that one yet, but I'll probably be picking that up just to see how much changes, uh, you know, what, what the changes are between the two. But this is really a folk, this book is really a focus on pre-written adventures. Uh, and how to use them. But there's little nuggets of information that you can pull out and use in any type of solo adventure. And that's what my focus was on today. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.